Okay, superstars, we're back talking about beam bending today. Probably talking about the number one or number two most watched video on all of my videos, and that is videos on shear moment diagrams, okay? Now, this is solids. I teach this in statics. Some schools don't teach this in statics, and the first time people see it's in solids. My students should have seen this. This is the second time. Now, by now, they should be getting good at it. I hope you are too, but if you're not, go back to my statics videos and look at about uh, a 58 to 61, less than 58 to 61 in statics, and review shear moment diagrams because it's the exact same technique, exact same problems, just, just more of them. So if you need that review, go back and watch that, okay? So what are we doing here? We're talking about shear and moment. I'm going to talk to you like you've never seen it before, and here it is, okay? So remember when we did before, when we said, if you take a beam, if you cut a beam in half, you section it at some point, okay? You have these internal forces in the beam, okay? You have an N, a normal force. You have V, a shear force. And you have M, a bending moment. Now, we've already covered that in another video. Remember, every time you cut the beam, you must have an M and V. You have to say it in Mickey Mouse voice, okay? Um, but uh, we could go back from the last video, and we could determine M, N, and V, those internal forces at any point on the beam. But what if we want to know, like, M and V, the moment and the shear, at every point on the beam, not at a specific point, but every single point. Well, we'd have to graph it, wouldn't we? And that's where we get shear, that's V, shear, scissors, moment diagram. So this is the shear force, this is the bending moment, okay? Now we need those things for some equations that are coming up. The big, the pivotal, most central uh, uh, beam bending equation is sigma equals MC over I. It's called the flexure formula. And M is the bending moment. And where are we going to get that? Off of that diagram, okay? So it's important to learn how this diagram works, okay? Now, what I call this is I call this L for the load curve. That's the given curve, okay? So this one's got two distributed loads, one going down, ooh, one going up. Don't mess that up, okay? And then what we do is we make sure we have plenty of room under this on our paper because we have two graphs underneath this guy. And newsflash, a little farther on in the class, there's two more under this. There's the slope equation, and then there's a deflection. So there's four integrals there. Oh, mind blown. We'll get to it, I promise. Okay? And we call this one V. This is the shear force. And in this case, with these units, this is going to be in pounds, okay? And this guy down here is M, the bending moment, and that's in pound feet, okay? Those are the units on that. Now, these graphs are related to each other. The V graph is the integral of the load graph. So whatever functions define these curves here, these, these uh, loads, this is going to be the integral of that graph. This is going to be the integral of that graph. So as we go down from graph to graph to graph to graph to graph, we're taking the integral, okay? So as we go down, we're integrating. Now let me show you my little trick of the day here, and that is called the order of the lines. Okay? Now the order of the lines is not in any book. I totally made it up, okay? Well, it's in one book. How to Ace Statics with Jeff Hansen on Amazon.com right now. Go get you a copy. Okay. <laughs> if I have a straight down, like a concentrated force, the next graph down is always going to have just a straight across line, a horizontal line. That would be like y equals 5, right? If I integrate that and go to the next graph down, integral of y equals a constant is what? y equals 5x, right? So how, does that, how do you plot that? Well, that's just a straight slopey do, right? And how do, if I integrate x, what do I get? I get x squared, which is parabolic. I'm going to put a para there, all right? And then if I integrate a parabolic curve, what do I get? Well, 
I get an x cubed, which we call a cubic. Okay, so this right here tells me if I have that line on the top graph, then the next graph down is going to have that. If I have that, then the next graph down is going to have that. If I have that, the next graph, so on and so forth. If you can remember that, the order of the lines, you'll always get these shapes right. So, for instance, this one has a straight across line, so the next graph has got to have a slope, which means that this bottom graph down here is going to have parabolic curves, right? All right? So if you understand that, you'll be miles ahead. So I think that let's, uh, let's see if we can solve this problem. Now, the first thing I see here is I've got two distributed loads. I want to turn them into concentrated loads by just adding a right one there and one there. And it's 8 feet times 100 pounds per feet. So that's a total of 800 pounds. And this is a total of 800 pounds, okay? So for all these problems, always, okay, step one, always, is find global equilibrium, okay, which really just means find the reaction forces, okay. So what do we have here? What kind of beam is that? What is that called? It's only hooked to a wall over there, A. There's no other supports on it. That's a cantilever beam, right? or a fixed support. What do you have there? Well, you have a reaction in the X, and the Y rather, AY. You have one in the X, I'll put an AX there. Of course, in this problem, I have no forces in the X direction, so AX is gonna be zero. And then you have some kind of a bending mode. Now, I think all of this stuff here, oh, it may go that way, right? So I may have a moment like this. And I'm going to call him uh, moment at A, okay? Why did you think it went up? Why did it go down? Well, because that force is the same as that one, but this one's farther away. Force times this is moment. I think the net is going to be a upwards, right? And so I think this one has to counter it. That's what I, that's what I think. I don't know if it's right or not. I'll find out here in a minute. I'm pretty sure it is, though. Okay? Now, to find, whoa, to find a Y... I got to do some of the force in the Y, don't I? Well, I got 800 down. I got 800 up. So guess what some of the force in the Y is? Zero. A Y is zero, okay? How about M A? Can we find that? Sum of the moments at A equals zero equals what? Okay? M A, right, which I drew negative, so minus M A. And then here's 800, which also rotates me around point A, negative. So minus 800 times how far away? Four feet, okay? Half of the eight, right? And then I've got this 800, which rotates me the other way. So plus 800 times how far away? Eight plus another four is 12, okay? So I'll move MA to the other side. That moment at A is equal to, okay, how much is that? 800 times 12 equals 9,600 minus 800 times 4. 6,400 foot pounds, okay? So that is this reaction over here at A. 6,400 pound feet, okay? All right, I think that's it. Let's see if we can graph this. Now, the first thing you gotta do before you start graphing on these graphs is you have to add what are called discontinuities. A discontinuity is everywhere there is a change in the function. And I just call it everywhere you think something interesting is gonna happen, okay? So I think something interesting is gonna happen right here. And I think something interesting has to happen over there at the end of the beam where I have no more um, function there, okay? So here we go. Let's see if we can plot this, okay? So I'm going to start off at zero, okay? Now, I don't have to do anything because AY is zero, so it's not going to make me jump up or down on my graph. This says I'm going to have to start. These arrows go downhill, don't they? So I'm going to go down. How much am I going to go down? Because I take a step, get 100 pounds. Take another step, 
get 100 pounds. So I like to think about it like this. You have a load backpack on your back, okay? You strap it on. There's nothing on there. You hop on the beam, and you start walking across the beam. As you go across the beam, ooh, somebody putting stuff in your backpack is getting heavier, right? So what are you feeling? 100 pounds? Take a step, 100 pounds. 100 pounds, 100 pounds, 100 pounds. Bam, how much did I get total? 800 pounds, okay? So there I am at negative 800, right? Now what's going to happen? Take another step. Well, somebody's putting 100 pounds, taking 100 pounds out of my bag, aren't they? 100 pounds, 100 pounds, 100 pounds, take 800 out, and bam. Guess what the sum of the forces for that whole beam need to be? Zero, okay? Takes you right back to zero again, okay? And there it is, okay? That's your V diagram. So if I ask you, what is V max, right? What is the maximum shear force? You're an engineer. You're designing a beam for me. That's the load that's on it. What's the maximum shear force you need to design for? Well, the answer is uh, 800 pounds. Okay? That's the maximum load on that beam. Okay? Now, let's go down and let's look at the moment. What's going to happen down here? So here's what I like to do on this. Number one, this is called the graphic method. Okay? Okay? I'm going to put a minus here and a minus there, okay? Because the minus means that I'm going to go on a slope down. If I have any areas that are above this axis, I'm going to put pluses on them. But this one's, this one's minus and a minus. Now, I know that the moment has to get back to zero also. Shear moment graphs always have to get back to zero, always. If you don't get back to zero, you've messed something up. So it's, you know, that's your, like, sign that I've messed something up. Now, this value here is in pounds. This value here is in feet, right? So if I find the area of that shape, and the area of that shape, they look the same, don't they? Then those units are going to be in pound feet. Hey, that's moment, okay? So the area of this shape is what? So the area of this shape is 800 times 8. That's 6,400 Divide it by two because it's a triangle. So 3,200 for you. And this guy is 3,200, okay? Now, the one we got to watch for is this moment over here because I got a moment down here. <laughs> How about a little funny saying, okay? And to help you remember this, okay? How about this? In the kitchen, okay? In your kitchen, check it out. The clock is above, and the counter is below, okay? What does that mean? That if I have a clockwise moment, it's going to be above the axis. If I have a counterclockwise moment, it's below the axis. It's kind of silly, but I bet it'll help you, right? So clockwise, things that rotate me like that, I'm going to go up. Things that rotate me counterclockwise, I'm going to go down. Okay, here we go. Let's go. What do we have? 6,400 is what? That's clockwise, so I'm going to go up. 6,400. Okay, so here I go. Whoop. There it is. 6,400. Okay. And then what? I'm going to go, I've got a negative, which means I'm going to go downhill. I'm going to go downhill 3,200, which is like halfway there, right? For my order of the lines, I am here. I know it's going to be parabolic, and so you have two choices. Your choices are, that looks parabolic. That looks parabolic. Which one is the right choice? That's the question of the day, okay? Which one? Okay, the way I like to think about it is like this. You're accumulating moment as you walk along the beam. But over here, you're getting short stacks, short stacks. Take a step, get a little bit. Take another step, get a little bit. But over here, take a step, get a fat stack, right? So I'm accumulating load slowly over here, but fast over there. The curve needs to follow that same thing, fast then slow. Over here, it's slow then fast. 
Think about ski, s snow skiing, right? What does a fast slope look like? That's a black diamond, Pew, straight down, right? What does a slow slope look like? Oh, that's a bunny slope. It's almost flat, right? So if you're going slow, then fast, that would be flat, then steep. That would be this top curve, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be this one. It's going to be the top curve. That one right there. Okay? This works every single time. Now, I'm at, I am at 3,200. But guess what? I got 3,200 more. Take me home to the place I belong on my moment graph back to zero. Okay? How do I get there? How do I get from there to there? Again, two choices. There's a parabolic this way or there's a parabolic that way. Which one is it? Well, over here I need to go fast, then slow, right? This one's slow, then fast. But this one here is steep, then flat. That's the one I need. This is fast and slow down here, isn't it? That guy right there. Okay. So here, bam, 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 is my moment diagram. Okay. So if I ask you, what is the biggest bending moment on that beam? The answer is 6,400 foot pounds at that wall over there, isn't it? Okay. And that's the kind of information that I'm looking for on these graphs, okay? Now, that one was pretty easy. That was just a little starter for you to get you introduced to the order of the lines and the fact that this and this and this are related with integrals and then how to kind of approach this, okay? You know what? Let's work some harder ones. Let's go to the next video and see if we can't work one a little bit harder. I'll see you there.